So there are a number of criteria we looked at, and uh, I'll, I'll mention a couple, and then I'll hand over to Joe, and he can talk about it. For us, it was very important to have a balanced manufacturing view here in India. We have a, an extremely strong site in the south, in Tamil Nadu, and that will continue to be invested in and will continue to grow. We wanted to have a balanced view where we have in the northwestern part of India, as is Gujarat, gives us easy access to uh, the northern markets. At the moment, it takes us up to 10 days to transport our vehicles to uh, the larger markets here in India, for instance, in Delhi, where 20% of all cars are sold. So that was a key element. Accessibility to ports was a key element. Availability of well-educated and, ex and uh, technically competent labour was an important element. There are three of the elements. So I might want to, Joe, you might want to mention a couple of the items that uh, we thought about before. Incentives are a part of the conversation that we have with the partnership with the government because these are very attractive investments. They bring a lot of foreign direct investment and they bring a lot of jobs, as we've talked about. But equally important are things like what's the business climate? What's the pro-business environment with the government? What's the infrastructure that exists? Roads, rail, port. What's the availability of land? Because land availability is very important so we can get started quickly on the investment to get to meet our timing. What are the kind of employment levels and, of trained and technical people that we can bring? All these things factor into the conversation that we have. This is, we do, because most states, jurisdictions around the world understand the competitiveness of the auto industry and will compete for um, the, the ability to have this kind of investment. At the end of the day, it's the other factors that come into our decision-making process because most states will offer the same level of support because of, of the importance of the auto industry. Here in Gujarat, we have found a very pro-business environment and a very, a very, a, a, a government very focused on implementation and getting things done, and that's very important to us. Let's go to the next question. Yeah, next question. It's very important for us geographically, as Michael said that we had a presence in the west, in the northern west part of the uh, country, given our strength in the south. So that's where we focused in on our, our initial analysis of where possible site locations could be. We wanted to have port access to the, to, to the western part of India, and of course we wanted to be closer to the Delhi and other markets that are up here. So that's where we started our analysis, but we had conversations with many different locations. Um, but ultimately, for the factors we talked about, we chose Gujarat, and that's why we want to focus on that conversation. In the new site in Sanan, there will be a vehicle assembly plant and an engine plant. The initial capacity of the assembly plant will be 240,000 units. The initial capacity of the engine plant will be 270,000 units. That's the initial capacity. We, of course, have the possibility to expand and, and, and plan to do that. I, I can't name the ports. Um, we've studied all the port locations. Michael can probably talk to that. Is, are you looking for a captive jetty or some kind of a captive facility as far as logistics and ports? <coughs> no, we'll continue to work with the industry and with the government to utilize the facilities that exist. Um, and we feel very, that's one of the reasons why we felt comfortable in Gujarat, that we had the transportation infrastructure to be able to make that happen. Very important part of our decision making. Um, we're not going to discuss the specific products uh, that we're playing. We'll have a chance to talk about those over the next several years. But as Michael has said previously, and, and I'll reiterate, uh, we are coming to participate in the totality of the industry in India. Ford has very strong global market share. We're second in the United States, second in Europe, third in Brazil, first in Canada, first in the UK. And we know how to compete with our global competitors in those markets we are going to bring the capabilities of our, of our corporation from a product, manufacturing, technical excellence, et cetera, to markets like India, China, ASEAN, to grow our business, as you mentioned. And we're going to bring the capability of Ford to the markets that we bring. The products that will be coming to India will be a broad portfolio, but rest assured, we'll have a number of small vehicles to compete where the volume is in the segments in, China, in India and in China, but, but, but today we're talking about India. When you look at the growth that's expected, the 8 million vehicles that you referenced by the middle of the decade, as I said in my remarks, 60 to 70 percent of the growth this decade we're expecting to come from Asia and Africa. And you can figure very quickly that the two dominant markets from a volume standpoint in this part of the world are China and India, 
And that's why we have two assembly plants under construction in China right now. And then and now we're going to have another assembly plant in India under construction. We have an engine plant under construction in China, now an engine plant under construction in India. And that's where you're going to see the growth occurring. Okay. Are you going to put up a vendor park facility? My last question was that. So are you going to call in the vendors over the auto vendors because the way Gujarat has an environment for that? So um, <clears throat> obviously it's extremely important for us as a part of our strategy, particularly if we're going to be in that uh, small car segment, as Joe said, to have a significant level of localization. Uh, it's critical as part of the strategy. So the answer is we will be encouraging encouraging in a significant manner, if you want to put it, our supply base to work with us and to be present here in Gujarat. And that's part of the multiplier effect that uh, we talked about where we've talked about on our site total employment of 5,000. There is significant additional multiplier that goes on beyond that and supply base is an important part. So for us, that's a key part of our strategy, yes. Okay. Any more questions Sorry, on the side? Just, yeah. well, well, what about exports? Which countries you are looking at? Um, we're not going to get into the specifics of ex exports. I will, I will say that the vast majority of the volume of this new manufacturing site is planned for India. Um, do we have plans to do some exports? Yes, but the vast majority of this, of this volume is planned for the Indian market and growth of Ford India's business. We currently export Figo um, to 50 markets around the world out of Chennai. So you can imagine that as we continue to grow the capabilities of our product portfolio here in India, we'll have options around the world to, to export vehicles. We, ship the, we plan to ship the new Ranger out of South Africa to 180 markets around the world. So there's lots of different opportunities of a company like Ford globally to, to export to many different markets. Let me add one more thing on the suppliers. We have worked very closely with the Gujarat government and there is land available nearby for the supply base to locate um, in Sanan near both our plant and the Tata plant, which is, will be next door. Question, sir. I don't know that we've announced a, a, a total number, but I can tell you that just even with the recent announcements we've made, um, uh, we've already announced all those new plants. In the last couple of years, we've announced investments totaling three to four billion dollars. It's, it's greater than that, um, but I know that those are what we've announced. In the, announced eight new products. We've launched the first of those, which is a new Fiesta in the last few weeks. Uh, many of the products beyond that, of those seven, will be in that small car category, hatchback category, because that's where 70% of all cars sold in India fit. In terms of, what was the second question again? Capacity. Oh, right. So, yeah, with what, what Joe talked about was our initial ca capacity there, right, of 240 and then 270. So, and he also said that we will be focusing mainly on India. But obviously, we will have some export markets and we'll make the appropriate announcement related to exports when the time comes. Today is all about announcing our investment here in Gujarat, which to me is pretty exciting and pretty significant. We'll be in that uh, segment or in those segments where significant volumes come because you don't announce a billion dollars worth of investment to be an interesting niche player. When we uh, launched our new engine plant, we brought many new suppliers along with us uh, for our powertrain facilities for our new engines and in Chennai. So 180 is a significant uh, level of commitment to India. Our Figo is 85% localised. Uh, that's why we've been able to keep our cost positioning to a, an extent that we can price position as aggressively as we have with Figo. We intend in many of our products as we launch to continue that um, development of our supply base, that level of localization, because that is critical um, to our success in terms of our future volume estimations. So we're very happy with where we're at and we're working well with it. One thing I'd like to add on that regarding the supply base, because the location in Gujarat was very much uh, taken into consideration for the um, supply base. And because of the supply base that exists along the west coast, in Maharashtra, etc. 
and the opportunity to be able to take advantage of that. But most importantly for Ford, you know, we now have 200,000 units of vehicle capacity in Chennai, which we intend to fill up. And we will have initial capacity in Gujarat, 240,000 um, units of vehicle capacity, which we intend to fill up. And so once we reach those numbers, it will become even more attractive for our global supply base and our local supply base in India to add capacity here in India. Because we'll now have the volume and the scale to attract more suppliers to India, and that's our plan. Well, I, I worked for General Motors for 10 years in the 90s, um, and, but I worked for Ford for, for over 10 years now. Ford's been on a, quite a journey over the last 10 plus years. When you step back and look at it in the late 90s, Ford was very, very, doing very well in North America and left, took advantage of that opportunity to buy a lot of other brands. Jaguar, Land Rover, Aston Martin, Volvo, Mazda. Um, and then during the last decade, um, all those brands needed attention and the Ford brand didn't get all the attention while the company was dealing with all the brands and a deteriorating business environment in North America. So we made a conscious decision over the last several years to divest of the other brands and focus on Ford and also fix the North American business. And you've seen the results of, that, of those efforts. Uh, we've, we've, we turned over very good companies. We sold very good companies to, to uh, other entities, including Jaguar Land Rover, to Tata. And, we, we, and those companies are doing well because we took care of those companies. But coming out of the global financial crisis of the last few years, Ford has come out a much stronger company. And our North American performance has been impressive from a profitability standpoint. So you ask the question, I'll frame it a little differently. It's taken us a little while to be able to focus on growth in Asia Pacific and Africa because of all the other things we did. We bought the other brands, had to work on them, then we had problems in North America. But we were able to fix our business ourselves by selling off the other brands to partners who could take good care of them and by fixing the North American business without the taxpayers of the United States and the government taking over our business. Now we are focused on the taking advantage of the strength of our company to bring all the capability that we have to markets like India and China. We weren't late to India. We were the first one. But we never had the opportunity to focus on it enough to bring all the great products we have around the world and let our Indian engineers help contribute to make more products to add to their portfolio around the world. And now we can do that. We've, we've taken advantage of clearing the way to focus on the Ford brand. So we can do that. We have a strong balance sheet, strong business, with profits from all markets of the world, South America, North America, Europe, and Asia Pacific and Africa. And now you're seeing what Ford can do and what we plan to do over the next several years with a very strong commitment to India, with today's announcement and what we plan to do. So watch what we do over the next several years. Um, you know, we know that there's a competitive environment here and there's strong competitors and we respect those competitors. But India has never seen, to date, what Ford Motor Company can do. And it's about to find out over the next four or five years. Thank you. Last we haven't had specific conversations with the Gujarati government uh, regarding other companies' uh, labor issues because they're unique to those companies. At Ford, we have a very strong relationship with our employees in Chennai. And even in Tamil Nadu, other manufacturers have had issues with their workforce that we have not had. At Ford, we're very proud of the relationship we have with our employees. We engage them, we involve them, and we respect them. Around the world, Ford has a strong reputation of being an employer of choice and not having many labor-related issues. In 2007, in the United States, both General Motors and Chrysler had a strike to sell their agreement. Ford did not. It's an environment we create with our people to be successful together. So we, we are aware of the issues that our competitors have had. We've studied them. Uh, we believe they're unique to the relationship that their employees have with, the, with their companies. And at Ford, we believe we can continue our great relationship with our employees and not have the same kind of issues because, because it's something that we work on every day.